what is going on guys so we're starting out the video here in the truck and by the title of this video and you guys probably saw the reveal video uh, we are going to get the fuel system installed on the s550 in this video uh, which is actually not today for me so the schedule is going to be kind of weird with how it, we're planning everything but hopefully it all works out hopefully the guys you enjoy it uh, but we're going to be going to save the s550 and uh, so basically what happened is we had the car over at Jordan's to get wrapped the fuel pump died so um, and then we had original wrap colored and then that wrap didn't work out so uh, you guys will find out all of that stuff uh, in the other video so right now the car is kind of stripped uh, of some body parts um, but it does not run and we got talking with VMP so we're actually gonna bring the car down to VMP uh, to get a fuel system because we're gonna be planning to run some E85 in the car uh, so we are gonna be borrowing Nick's trailer because it has a winch as you guys know I still haven't gotten one yet if you guys want to send me one that'd be awesome <laughs> I'm sure I'll get one at some point, uh, but we're going to be borrowing Nick's trailer to be able to bring the car up on the trailer. Obviously, it's a pretty heavy car, and it's not going to be easy to push, and I'm by myself. So, we're going to go pick up the S550. Should be some fun, and I, I mean, it would be awesome if it starts up. The fuel pump is intermittent, so it works sometimes and it doesn't the others, so, uh, which does indicate a bad fuel pump. We're going to bring it over to VMP tomorrow, and we're going to get this thing cranking again, and soon to be on E85 and and 800 plus wheel horsepower. So, sounds like a good time, let's do it. All right, so I got the car pushed over, lined up with the trailer. We're gonna set up the winch, pull it right up, and strap it down. For those of you wondering, fuel pump does not prime. Usually you hear it, but it does not work today. thing is much heavier than all the others. Alright, I think we're good. Alright, got the car strapped down and I'm going to bring it home for the night and then BMP in the morning. So I think that's when we'll check in with you guys. As you can see, spoilers off, badges are off. So we're going to get cranking on this thing. Alright, we're getting the car unloaded. I think that would be a no. Bang, bang the pump for me real quick. That's the rubber. I think that's a no. I'm gonna give you a no. <laughs> that's a no for me, dog. Yeah, that's a no. Okay. That means uh, two manpower pushing. Let me put this camera down. If you couldn't tell, we are at VMP Performance and we're gonna get the fuel system installed on the car. Hopefully, bringing it back to life. We have Jesse here. 
he's going to be installing the fuel system on the car and hopefully yep. bringing it back to life. We'll see what happens. You know? Yeah. I mean, your professional diagnosis, mm -hmm. given the information I gave you, fuel pump fuse, fuse is good. Fuses are good. Intermittently running. Sounds like the pump just doesn't care to live anymore. Yeah. It gave it up. It's <laughs> Ford problems. But we'll be ready to make a lot yep. more power now. So. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Should be fun. Let's get started. Let's do it. So we got all the parts laid out right here, hardware kit. We got the relay harness, uh, so that's gonna power this thing. Regulator, some other stuff that I don't know what it is. Some lines, um, a Whipple adapter kit, and we have the hat, the dual uh, 455 pumps right here. And that's gonna go right in the car. So the cool thing about this kit is it's all plug and play. Uh, we got the harness here, uh, fuel filter, the hat. The lines are the correct length. Uh, we got everything you need to install this. It's actually not too difficult. Uh, Jesse's gonna be installing it on here, but we'll walk you through the process a little bit and they have a full install video on their channel. If you guys wanna check that out too, if you guys are installing the same kit. And I also have a link down in the description if you guys wanna check this kit out. You don't have to worry about fuel being in the rails. <laughs> we know there's been none of that for a while. We didn't have to unplug the FPDM or anything. No. Nope. Rail is drained. So I did just inform Jesse that we are installing injectors and I guess we have to pull the supercharger off to install injectors. So we got the Fuel Injector Clinic 1000cc injectors. These are going to support probably up to 900 wheel horsepower on E85. We're shooting for 800 to 850 wheel horsepower and Jesse here is having some fun, right? Oh yeah. I was like, hey, do I need to tell you now if we're doing injectors? He's like, yeah. Yeah, it would have been not fun if you told me later. <laughs> so Fuel Injector Clinic, they provide the flow data for the exact set of injectors that come with your kit. It's always pretty cool to look at. I don't really know exactly what all that means, but I think if everything looks even, that means that they work. So that's pretty good. And we have the injectors themselves right here because he's upgrading his injectors you have to pull the fuel rails off um, if you don't upgrade your injectors you don't have to pull the fuel rails on the Whipple kits you can get the driver side fuel rail off without pulling the blower but you have to pull the blower for the passenger side on the VMP kits it's the opposite you can get the passenger side off but you have to pull the blower to get the driver side off so this isn't anything unusual, it's just you upgrade injectors, the head unit has to come off, it is what it is. There she is. I saw a drop of fuel. There's some fuel in the rail. It could have started. Uh, uh. <laughs> All right, so Jesse's gonna be installing the FIC 1000cc injectors. Right here we have DW 72 pound injectors. That's what comes with the stage two Whipple kit. These injectors are pretty good. They support a lot of power, but when it comes to E85, they will not be up to the task. You got your lube? Oh yeah. Don't need the height adapters. It's a weird clip. So this cap right here is part of the kit, right? Yeah, this comes as a supplementary kit for Whipple systems. So you delete the crossover in the front. Yeah, you delete the crossover on the front and then you still run the crossover on the back and on the driver's side rail 
I'm going to show you how to mount the regulator and it keeps the engine bay clean, uh, lets you reuse the factory feed line as your new return line so you only have to one, run one line. This makes it easier. It's ready to go back in. We'll pull the other one off, set that one up, and then we'll do the regulator. Nice. Fuel pressure regulator. Right here with a 90. We're going to sit it right here and run the lines. So. One cap on the passenger side, 190 degree fitting on the driver's side, and then we're ready to hook up our fuel system. So Jesse just informed me that the line here is in fact the feed and the factory feed line is actually turned into the return because you don't need a very large line to return. Uh, so that is right here. I already had the rear seat pulled out of the car because we were trying to diagnose fuel pump issues. We're going to pull out the fuel pump and Jesse's going to get everything set up. Well, you can see that I have bypassed the booster. Yep. So we took that out of the equation of something being wrong. There's nothing broken. Yeah. Usually the pump motors themselves burn out. We're going to let the pump dry out a little bit before we try to jump it. Why? Because sparks and fuel <laughs> and millions of dollars worth of inventory and cars um, don't mix that well. They mix, but not that well. So we're gonna we're gonna let it dry out a little bit. I'm gonna try to drain this fuel back into the tank before we pull it, so that the car doesn't smell like fuel, because that's no fun either. Not bad for a guy with a mustache. <laughs> a nice close-up shot. It's like the uh, scene from Ace Ventura when he comes out of the rhino. Uh, cut and splice the only two wires that need to be cut and spliced. Right here. With the factory sending unit. And then we're going to drop it in the car. You want me to move somebody? And that's it. And with these, this is literally just a circuit to measure resistance, so the continuity does not matter at all. So you connect whichever wires make you happy. Ready to drop in. Back into your cave. <laughs> hey, what you doing under there? Oh, just uh, feeding this line through. Go under the car and we'll meet up with our fuel line in the front at the fuel filter, and we'll show you how to mount that. Good, little more. Good, little less. Put it on the bench over there. You got. A check valve that keeps pressure ahead of the filter and the rails. You got fuel flow here, fuel flow here. Make sure you put it in the right way because it's a check valve. Um, you put it up here, stretch your lines. You'll notice our pre-made lines fit with just a tiny little bit of slack that you take up. And then we'll bolt everything down. We got a clamp here to attach the filter to our fuel line.
All right, so I just want to go over the fuel line. So this is the new feed right here. And there is a fitting on the top that converts the factory feed to the return uh, for the hat. This runs all the way through here. Fuel filter is somewhere down here in the mix. Somewhere in there. Yeah, and then that comes up and around and up to our regulator, which is all behind there. Well, what are we doing here, sir? We're gonna put power to this old pump and see if she goes zappy zappy. Uh oh. It's working. Hmm. Uh oh. Something else is wrong with your car. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> so now that we know this, they... we'll start an actual diagnostic once the fuel system's in. Fuel pump driver module might be the. Uh... It's possible the driver module's bad. It's possible you got some wiring issue somewhere. Uh, fuse box issues. It's possible you had fuel pressure the whole time and maybe you just lost spark. So, you were getting a fuel system anyway. Before anybody sits here and jumps at me and, oh my god, you diagnosed the car wrong. The car was never even diagnosed. We were doing a fuel system anyway. Look at this so, guy anticipating the comments. You know how it goes. <laughs> YouTube's a very scary place. Yeah, it was more like, well, the fuel pump died. Shoot, we're going to have to do that fuel system sooner than we thought. Right. So we'll get the fuel system in. We'll find out why it doesn't start. And then we'll do Mustang things. Woo! So we have our plug and play harness. Yeah, this is the guy. So this long section here is what actually gets run up front to the battery. Um, it's a couple of fuses that run a pair of relays. So your, your fuel pumps are on their own fused and relayed circuit. So it's not a big stress on any circuit because it's a heavy wire relayed circuit. But all this other stuff just plugs right in. And we're just using the ground that's on the fuel pump driver module. Yeah, right, right where we grounded our um, voltage booster, we're gonna ground this relay in the same spot. So that is the wire that was ran up through the car. It was ran in the inner fender well behind here, up and into there. That's gonna be our main power. And after that, I think we are good to attempt to start it. It may not start, it may start. I also got a tune to load in it as a base 93 tune for the FIC 1000 CC injectors and the fuel pump. So two splices there. Yeah. And that's just to make things easy, right? Yeah, that's it's so you don't have to push fuses through the firewall cuz it's like having a baby. It just it doesn't fit. It hurts. <laughs> So, and then that's just our power, right? Yep, we connect these two lines right here to the battery. We'll tie all this back. And then we can, at that point, we plug a jumper in the FPDM to turn the pumps on, run the pumps, and set the base pressure. Once the base pressure is set, you can fire the car up, assuming the car fires up. Fires up, yeah. All right, so pretty much everything is wired. Uh, the connection is there that goes inside to the fuel pumps. We got the feed line, turn line, regulator, all the fun stuff. All of it. So now you're going to set base pressure. I'm going to set base pressure at 50. 50, I think, is what Rob said. Is what he asked for. And then I'm going to run a map reference to the regulator. And then we're going to go do burnouts. Because hey. you're going to do a burnout before you leave. I you might get in trouble. I don't think it's but actually... you're going to do it. I don't think the tune is actually uh... it's a requirement <laughs> it's the only way you're allowed to leave our property i'd have to approve that with my tuner <laughs> i'm i won't do a burnout in your vehicle because that's just not right but you have to do one before you can leave i like burnouts but so i don't make the rules <laughs> do 50 psi as requested by rob the tune maker shoe maker all right, so you can see we're right on the money at 50. I'm gonna let it run for a second to purge air, make sure we stay at 50. I'll shut it off now and uh, run our map reference to the regulator. 
and then fire it up and Andrew's gonna do a burnout for us. Maybe. So Jesse just put a nipple in right there. That's for the vacuum boost reference that's gonna go over to the regulator. Since Palm Beach Dino is tuning this, uh, that is the setup he requests. Every tuner is a little bit different. So do you think it's gonna start? All right, first of all, people, comment down below. Do you think it's gonna start? Do you think it's gonna start? Raise your hand if you think it's gonna start. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> oh boy. All right, let me hop in here. No, let's plug back in. Huh? It's good to go. So as long as the FPDM isn't fried. If it is, we're gonna pull it out of check. Nope, I hear fuel pump. <laughs> It runs! Nice! It's alive! Just gonna check that. Pressure. You're gonna bring it up just a little bit. Yeah. Not bad. Yep, there's 50. What have we concluded so on the science after, channel? After the car fired up, we started our diagnostic and we realized that the car fired up. So, intermittent fuel pump here. Sometimes it would run, sometimes it wouldn't. And that's what happened. It didn't work when Jordan tried to move it mm -hmm. and he freaked out and called me. He's like, hey man, the car's broken. Yeah. I went over there, started right up and then stalled. Mm -hmm. And then wouldn't start up again. Wouldn't start off the trailer. Some For some reason it started after we put the fuel system in. Uh, it was weird. I don't know. <laughs> so it did jump, but you know. It yeah, happens. Yeah. Ford stuff. But the car is running, idling, and good to go. Go get you a tune. Get some numbers. Go to Force Mustang powers. Week. Yep. Get Crash. Some, get some rap. Crowd. Curbs. Crowds. Um, all the stuff. Yeah, mustaches. Yes. Hold on. All right, so the car is now running again and it will drive, which makes everything so much easier. No longer have to be pushed. So it turns out that the fuel pump did in fact die and everything is good on the car. We installed the fuel injector, 1000 cc injectors, and Jesse installed the VMP fuel system on the car. So the kit is overall fairly easy to install. It's much easier when you have a professional to install it for you, but... Semi-professional. Yeah. Uh, I follow along the process. Anybody could really do this process. Um, obviously, he has some experience doing it. Um, I've, I've installed one or two. I might have helped. I might have had a hand in developing the kit, you know. Nice. So this kit is for 2011 and up Coyote Mustang. Uh, pretty much bolt-on, easy barely any wiring to do. So if you guys are looking for a fuel system, this one it will support quite a bit of power. Uh, there are some other options out there that will support about 800 wheel horsepower on E85. This one will support probably, what, over a thousand? You guys made 1140 uh, with, 1141 with track, track attack. attack. And we were not maxed out. So this fuel system will support a lot of power and that is probably where this car is gonna end up going. Uh, right now we're shooting for 800, 850 wheel horsepower. Uh, so I'm sure we'll be able to get there without a problem with this setup. So I'm very excited. We are now gonna bring the car up to get wrapped and continue on the process with the car. Do 
the burnout. I'll come back for the burnout. Okay. 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 <laughs> Bass tune. All right guys, so I just got the car loaded on the trailer. We are now bringing this up to Jordan, my good friend, who is going to be wrapping the car. I'm assuming you guys have already seen the color at this point, but I'm sure you want to see some of the process of that and everything else. Huge shout out to VMP. Uh, we decided to go with their fuel system as we talked about earlier. We have fuel injector clinic, 1,000cc injectors, and this car is going to be ready to make 800 plus wheel horsepower. So we are really excited. We will be updating you guys with the full dyno numbers and everything we're doing to the car at this kind of remake over step. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned. If you guys are new here, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button down below, and we will see you guys in the next one. Hi. Hi. Hi.